Why is NASA stuck in low Earth orbit? The problem with NASA's lack of current achievement is not money. The problem is lack of focus, it's lack of a goal. It shouldn't be humans to Mars in 50 years. It should be humans to Mars in 10. We can do this. We do not need gigantic nuclear electric spaceships to send people to Mars. That, that is pork, it's nonsense. The primary question I get from the American people is, why aren't we doing this? There's a big sense of disappointment, almost verging on a sense of betrayal. The purpose of spaceships is to actually travel across space and go to new worlds, not to hang out in space and observe the hell. Hello everyone, I'd like to introduce today my guest Robert Zubrin. Robert Zubrin is well known as one of the most respected scientists in the world. Uh, I remind, in 1988, uh, George Bush, a president of the United States, announced the ambition of his country, it was colonization of Mars. Uh, two years later, uh, Robert Zubrin with the colleagues prepared a special report for the uh, Congress. The um, report was called Mars Direct. Uh, within this report, uh, the scientists uh, proposed the, the government uh, the colonization of Mars and flight to Mars within one decade. In one year, one year later, uh, the Congress rejected uh, this project, uh, allegedly due uh, big expense. In 10 years, uh, George W. Bush uh, announced uh, the second ambition of uh, the, the colonization of Mars. Um, Robert Zubrin was invited uh, to the Congress and met with um, the congressmen and they achieved an agreement uh, that the United States should have the appropriate program in colonization of Mars. Uh, after the meeting, the government announced uh, the plan of the colonization of, of uh, Mars um, by 2030. But in 2010, uh, uh, Obama administration rejected this project. Robert uh, said several times uh, that uh, po political decisions, uh, politicians uh, uh, create uh, the obstacles uh, in colonization of Mars. Uh, it, 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 it were uh, main obstacles. Uh, and. Um, uh, he has said several times uh, that uh, due to these reasons, uh, humanity uh, lost uh, their generations uh, in, uh, in colonization of Mars. Now we are talking with uh, Robert Zubrin about the um, perspective of colonization of Mars, about technical abilities, about benefits of colonization of Mars, about other interesting issues. Hello Robert, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Oh, okay. Robert, I have some questions uh, for you. My first question concerning uh, the current ability. Um, on your opinion, uh, is humanity ready for the flight to Mars? How do you think? From a technical point of view, uh, we are ready to fly to Mars. Uh, we are much better prepared today to send humans to Mars then uh, we were to send men to the moon in 1961, and we were there eight years later. Uh, given a political decision to do it, we could be on Mars within a decade. Robert, my next question concerning your project Mars Direct, which uh, was presented uh, in 1990. Uh, on your opinion, how do you think, what's the main obstacle of the presentation of your project? What, uh, what uh, prevented your uh, project? Well, the primary obstacles to doing this are political, is obtaining a decision to do it. Uh, you know, uh, NASA actually was, uh, in 1969, prepared to send humans to Mars by 1981. That uh, program was derailed by the Nixon administration, and we've never had a consensus since upon uh, of actually doing it. You know, in... Uh, in 1989, the first President Bush called for uh, going back to the moon and on to Mars, but NASA bureaucracy presented such a costly program that uh, the political class abandoned it. Uh, in 2004, the younger President Bush called for a program 
but he put a schedule on it that was so slow that it's returning to the moon by 2020 in 16 years and only took eight years to do it the first time that uh, the program had barely started by the time the administrations changed and it was aborted. Right now, NASA has no goals for its human spaceflight program. Uh, they're spending money at almost Apollo levels, but without any goals. It's kind of absurd. Uh, but I, I think we could do it. I think Russia could do it. I think Europe could do it if any of these countries had the will to do it. Robert, I have an optimistic question. Um, we achieve Mars. We uh, try to colonize Mars. We start to build homes, uh, etc. You support uh, the terraforming of Mars. Uh, what are the stages of the terraforming? Well, okay, before we terraform Mars, we're going to explore Mars, and then we're going to establish human settlements on Mars. But once there are human beings living on Mars, they will have a strong desire to make Mars a, a more fertile planet, a place more friendly to life. Uh, the way this would be done is by creating an artificial greenhouse effect on Mars, by setting up factories to produce fluorocarbon gases that are very strong greenhouse agents. And if we were producing them on Mars at the same rate we currently produce them on Earth, which would be an industrial effort um, involving about 5,000 megawatts of power, which is quite significant, but for example, that's about the amount of power the city of Chicago uses, so we're not talking about an order of magnitude more power than the human race currently disposes of. We're talking about simply a, a significant uh, major city kind of amount of power. If we were producing uh, fluorocarbon gases at that rate and releasing them to the Martian atmosphere, within 50 years we'd warm Mars 10 degrees centigrade. And that itself would cause massive amounts of carbon dioxide to outgas from the Martian soil, which would thicken the atmosphere and add to the greenhouse effect. So that within a century, uh, Mars would be warmed to perhaps uh, uh, 30, 40 degrees centigrade. And under those conditions, we would have liquid water uh, at the, in the tropical regions of Mars. We have the water that's currently frozen into the Martian soil would start to melt, would flow in the dry rivers of Mars. The lakes would start to fill up. The water would evaporate. There would be rain. There would be snow. Uh, and it would be possible to spread plant life on the planet. Uh, once plant life starts to spread, then some of the carbon dioxide will be turned into oxygen, and over time you would have an atmosphere that animals could breathe as well. Uh, you know, this is a long-term project, but it will be accelerated by the advance of technology over time. And so I think that while looking at it from today's point of view, it's looking like a thousand-year project, it will probably really be done in 200 years. Okay, uh, the flight to Mars uh, is continuum about... Uh... Uh, six, uh, seven uh, months. Um, on your opinion, how we can uh, uh, reduce uh, the duration of the flight to Mars? Uh, nuclear engine, uh, uh, thermonuclear engine? Well, uh, currently with current technology, it takes six months to fly to Mars. Uh, it would be convenient to reduce that, but it's not strictly necessary. Six months is how long it used to take to sail from England to Australia in the 1800s. Uh, six months is how long a standard rotation on the space station is. So I think the first colonists will go to Mars in ships that take six months to do it. But once there is human civilization on Mars, then there will be a strong incentive to develop more advanced spacecraft. Uh, you know, nuclear thermal propulsion could increase the rate, but if we really want to increase the rate, we'll want to go to significantly more advanced things, such as fusion propulsion. And this is a very interesting thing, because, you know, the same uh, technology that makes it possible someday to reach Mars in a month will make it possible to travel to the outer solar system, which now takes, you know, maybe six years to fly to Saturn, and it will be possible to do that in six months. So each step prepares the next, and once we are settling in the outer solar system, we'll have a driver for even more advanced technologies. You know, Columbus sailed the Atlantic in ships that even 50 years later, no one would have sailed the Atlantic in, because there was no need to develop Atlantic-capable ships before Columbus. But after uh, European civilization became transatlantic, we moved forward, we got our three-masted sailing ships, and then clipper, clipper ships, and then steam ships, and ocean liners, and eventually Boeing 747s. And I think it will be the same way with space. 
The first people to go to Mars will go in ships that their grandchildren will not believe that anyone ever sailed across space in, okay? Because they will do it much quicker and in much greater convenience. But the pioneers will do it the hard way. Their descendants will do it easier, but will have technologies that will make it possible for more daring souls to go much further. Robert, uh, how many persons will participate in first flight? Uh, what the qualities uh, should have uh, the first uh, colonizers of Mars? Well, uh, I believe that the first crew to Mars will be approximately four people. Uh, it might be nicer to have five or six, but uh, because the mass of the mission scales in proportion to the size of the crew, we will need to minimize the size of the crew. I think four is a good number. It's the smallest number you can have and have split the crew up into two groups and have no one be alone. The two most important skills for the mission will be that of mechanic. The person who can fix mechanical and electrical systems is probably the most valuable member of the crew, the most essential. And after that is field scientists. They are the intellectual payload of the crew, the people who are the geologists and microbiologists who can explore Mars for its resources and to look for life. So I would like to have two mechanics and two scientists. Uh, there are secondary skills that might come in useful, such as medical doctor, but I don't think that any person of the crew should have that as their primary responsibility. Hopefully that's a responsibility that will never need to be used. Um, you know, there'll be a need for a pilot, but only for a few moments during the mission. So probably one of the scientists will also be a person who has practiced medicine at some point in their life, probably one of the mechanics will be somebody who is a good pilot as well. But um, if, if we're thinking in terms of Star Trek terminology, two Scotties and two Spocks, that's how I'd make the crew. One of the main uh, problems uh, which uh, the scientists announced uh, is uh, the creation of gravity. On your opinion, how do you think? Uh, does the problem exist now? Well, uh, you know, uh, they actually found that a significant part of the negative effects of zero gravity were really being caused by, believe it or not, vitamin D deficiency, uh, which can be remedied with vitamins. But if we really want to preserve the muscular capabilities of the crew, I think we should have artificial gravity on a Mars ship, and uh, this can be accomplished by rotating the ship. This is uh, The physics for this is well understood. It involves some engineering design issues, but nothing that is beyond our capabilities to uh, understand and to implement. Robert, I'd like to get your opinion about a one-way mission. Uh, when people uh, like to colonize Mars without a preliminary exploration of Mars. Well, uh, you know, we're all on a one-way mission to somewhere. Life is a one-way trip. And uh, so... Uh, you know, if you don't go to Mars, you'll die on Earth. Uh, but the, the one-way mission is conceived of by Mars One and others. is It's not a suicide mission. It's a colonization mission. They are moving from Mars to Earth. And so long as it's conceived of that way, and you send people one way to Mars and have the resources and the organization to continue to send more people and more equipment and more supplies to Mars so that... Uh, you can implement a settlement program and you're not simply abandoning people on Mars, then this is uh, a very good plan. It's what needs to be done. It what, it's what needs to be done eventually. I think that probably the first human missions that go to Mars will be exploration missions that do round trip missions. But at a certain point, we will go one way to Mars, uh, just as the uh, people who settled America came one way to America from Europe. Robert, how do you think, if we combine the efforts of American and uh, Russian uh, scientists, uh, may we accept uh, the colonization of Mars at the beginning of uh, 2020s? Uh, I think that's entirely possible. Uh, I think uh, this could be done as a collaborative program. I think it could actually be done by either country doing it on its own or by kind of a friendly competition, kind of like the Olympics, where each one is striving to excel, but we're both there to help each other if we need to be. Robert, my last question concerning the birth of people to get baby outside uh, the Earth, in the space, on, on Mars, for example. Um, how do you think? 
uh, are we are ready for reproduction of people outside the earth uh, for example on mars uh, in the space well uh the answer to that is not completely known uh however i believe there's every reason to believe that human beings uh will be able to reproduce and grow in the one-third gravity of mars um I, I think there's no reason uh to believe that is not the case uh i think experiments can be done uh with mammals and small rotating spacecraft in earth orbit to ver verify that mammals can grow up and reproduce properly in one-third gravity uh, but uh, I think there's simply no reason to believe that this won't happen. Um, now, I think people who do grow up on Mars in one-third gravity will uh, not like coming back to Earth because they will experience the gravity here as being excessive. They will want to know why anyone would possibly want to live on a planet where it's such heavy gravity as the Earth. Um, and uh, so I think that very few Martians will want to return to the Earth and they will develop a new culture of their own and they'll probably develop new languages of their own, certainly new literature. They'll make their own contributions to technology and invention. They'll have their own ideas on how governments should be organized. And they'll certainly have their uh, own history of heroic deeds that will be used to not only to inspire their own culture, but those who will venture out further. So what we're talking about here is giving birth to a new branch and ultimately many new branches of human civilization. Um, and this is, something wonderful. This is something that the present age will be known in the future for. Our time will be remembered because this is when people first set sail for other worlds. Robert, thank you very much for your interview. Thank you very much for your interesting answers. I wish you success in uh, realization of your dreams, uh, in implementation of your projects. Uh, I hope the collaboration between the Russian scientists and the American scientists will continue and we achieve common goal. We build first homes on Mars. Прямо через Неаполь прошли. Такая красота. Ладно.